Greetings and salutations. Welcome to question three of the level three A quiz standard of um, 2019. This is our last question. Um, most of us do on asses and bases. Um, let's get into it. Okay, question three. So we got two solutions. One is CH3COH, one is the ammonium chloride. Explain why, which solution has the lower pH. Your answer should refer to the concentration and you don't need to calculate. So the first thing that you need to remember, so you got two pKa's, one is 4.76, one is 9.24. Just remember the Oops, I don't want to use that color. I like that blue. Uh, let's go back to it. Um, so the lower the pKa, just remember this. I'll show you the mod answers a bit later. The lower the pKa, the higher the Ka. The higher the Ka, the more dissociation. Oops. The more the dissociation, the higher the concentration of H3O plus. You can see where I'm going with this. The higher the H3O plus concentration, the lower the pH. The lower the pH, the stronger the acid. Okay, so if I were to use, like say, CH3COH, if I were to show this process, CH3COH plus water, you would partially dissociate to give us CH3COO minus and H3O plus. Okay, so think about this, yeah. What does a, what does Ka calculate? Ka is the acid dissociation constant. Ka is CH3COO minus multiplied by the concentration of H3O plus and then divided by the CH3COH concentration, but because it's a weak acid, we actually don't care too much about it. We'll just, you know, we'll just leave it. I mean, let's just chuck it in. Why don't we just chuck it in? Actually, we do need to chuck it in. Let's just put it in. But you can see the higher the Ka, the higher the Ka, that means the more products you have. That means the more H3O plus you have. That means mathematically, when you negative log, the lower the pKa. So there we go. So the lower the pKa, the higher the Ka. That means the more dissociation has occurred, the higher the concentration of the hydronium ion. When you have more hydronium ions, the lower the pH, the stronger the acid. Okay, so you don't need to do any calculation. If you get the hang of that, that's quite straightforward. But here's the answer if you just wanted to have a look at it. It's the same thing as the NDQA marking schedule because it's the same. Once you get the hang of it, it's very, very standard question. Okay. Um, next one, you let evaluate the electrical conductivity of ethanoic acid and NH4Cl. So equations, equations, oops, equations, equations, equations. Okay. So the first, the most important thing, again, I'm just going to rewrite the equation again. You need to do this, partially dissociate, and you will make um, this, and then for your NH4Cl, you will dissolve this in water, that's split off into NH4 plus and Cl minus, and then you need to understand that the NH4 plus, you would have seen ammonium a million times, this is a conjugate acid of ammonia, so you will make this particular, um, oops, what am I doing, um, I can just do it here, H3 plus, okay, so this is two steps, this is equation one, and this is for NH4Cl. So what does electrical conductivity depend on? It depends on the concentration of free moving charged particles. In this case, ions. So do we have a lot of ions? So your CH3COOH partially dissociate. So you only have a very small, you have a very small concentration of this guy and that guy. 
So the so ethanoid and the hydronium ion concentration will be very, very small. If you don't have a lot of concentration of those ions, then you don't have very good electrical con conductivity. So this is very poor. NH4Cl in comparison, when it dissolves, you make these two um, um, these two ions and you know you have so much of those this dissociation process actually doesn't really matter too much because you already have a lot of nh4 plus and cr minus large concentration very good conductor excellent question most of it this is like a year 12 question um so nothing really new here okay so if you want to have a look at the answers there it is same thing as what i just discussed um very standard question i feel question three is a lot easier compared to the previous ones okay let's have a look at this so the ethanoic acid has a solution um, has a H3O plus of uh, 1.78 times 10 to the power negative 3. Calculate the concentration of the ethanoic acid. So this is where you need to, so you got given the pKa, and you got given the pKa of, of both solutions actually, and then they asked you to calculate the concentration. So this is where you need to use a Ka equation that we did. So let's just do the same thing again can see I you know because I, I really encourage you know I, I, I live what I preach I really like um, I love a quiz I think it's a really really clever standard um, but and the best way to train yourself to do well in the standard is to follow particular patterns like this is what I tend to do um, I write that and then I write the Ka how do I figure out the Ka of ethanoic acid is CH3COO minus times the concentration of H3O plus, which will give me, and then divided by the concentration of CH3COOH. Okay, so what do I know? I know H3O plus is that. So I know this guy, that's given. I know Ka because I know pKa. Now I need to calculate the concentration of ethanoic acid. I need to calculate this. So this is where you need to understand that um, if we, that's why I write the equation, which color should I use, let's use this one. Let's say if X moles of this that has dissolved, that's again, ugly X, yeah, I can't do X's tonight. Um, this X, if X moles of this dissolved or dissociated, I will make this X moles of this and X moles of this. So can you see that the concentration of CH3COO minus and H3O plus is actually the same? So that makes the calculation a lot easier, doesn't it? So that's what, how do we figure out pKa? Ka, so sorry, how do we figure out Ka from pKa? Ka um, is 10 to the power of negative pKa. So let's just substitute all the numbers in. Ka is 10 to the power of negative 4.76. How nasty of them giving you this because you don't need that number. Um, and then multiply, uh, and then equals 1.78 times 10 just put that number in here so you can see where I got that from. That's from the question highlighted. 10 to the power negative 3. This is squared divided by um, the concentration of the ethanoic acid, which is this guy. I'm just going to keep it as it is since I can't write x's properly tonight. And then we just solve this. Okay, so if I move it around, CH3COOH will equal to 1.78 times 10 to the power negative 3 squared divided by 10 to the power of negative 4.76 and then you should get 0 0.182 moles per theta. Now this particular question um, normally what they try to do you know just since we're here um, again I'll use a different color pen because it's a little bit um, difficult not difficult um, a little bit extra when you do the weak acid pH calculation calculation you get given you need to use this equation pH uh, not pH h3o plus equals ka times the concentration of the weak acid yeah now you don't need to know how to derive that but the whole deriving process is using this particular thing okay um, you don't need to understand how to get there but as you can see they're starting to change the questions around they actually 
using this, which is part of the deriving process, you know, making these the same. So this H3O plus square, so you move this to the other side and you square root to get the H3O plus, they actually change the questions around, which I think is really, really clever. Okay, but otherwise this is a mirror question, just manipulate, you have to understand how to write Ka, and then understand the xx equals and um, figure out the concentration at the end. Make sure you don't make a mistake. Next one, dilute HCl is added to the solution. Da, da, and until the ratio of the da, da, is uh, two to five. Ah, nice question. Okay, so we have HCl added to sodium ethanoate. Now, when you have, so first thing first, HCl is an acid, CH3COONA, which is just CH3COO minus. You can just ignore the Na plus as a complex sign. What, what are we gonna get? We're gonna make CH3COOH and Cl minus. Can you see this thing here? Oh, why did I change my color? And that thing there, those are your conjugate acid and base pairs and which is the essential thing to make a buffer. Okay, so it is, that's how you make a buffer. The two ways of making buffer, one is using a strong acid or strong base to neutralize the weak acid or weak base, and so you make the other conjugate acid or base, or you simply mix a, con a weak acid with this conjugate base. You know that that's easier, but this in this case you are required to do this particular calculation. So you need to understand to do buffer pH calculation, buffer pH equations. Now there are two. I personally like this one, pH equals pKa plus log base divided by acid, or you know, well, you can use the other one, or you can use H3O plus equals Ka times um, the concentration of acid divided by base. The reason why I like this one because you're using pKa, and they always give you pKa, so I don't have to negative log this and then negative log that. So you know, it saves you a lot of time because every time you key in the number into a calculator, you're running risk of getting the wrong answer. Okay, um, so what are we trying to do? We're trying to figure out the pH. What is the pKa? The pKa is in the question above us. Um, so the pKa of um, CH3COH is the what is it, 4.76 from memory, 4.76. Now, plus log. Now, this is, again, a very neat question. I really like this question from um, last year, um, 2019's exam, where I wrote it, kudos to you. Um, so CH3CONA until the ratio of the CH3COONA to ethanoic acid is two to five. So rephrase that, that means the CH3COO minus, because Na is a suspected I, divided by CH3COOH equals two divided by five. Okay, so that's what it means. They actually didn't give you the concentration, they gave you the ratio. Because what a buffer solution actually, the pH of a buffer solution depends on the ratio of the weak acid and its conjugate base. So they gave it to you two to five. That divided by that equals two to five. Now let's come back here. What is the CH3CO minus? This is the base, this is the acid. Okay, so base divided by acid give equals two divided by five. So we can just come back here and just go two divided by five, which is 0 0.4. So you get 4.76 plus um, log 0.4. And then if you get the answer, you will get the 4.36 as your final answer. Okay, again, very straightforward question. Um, if you know what you're doing, that's a mirror question, but just make sure you memorize these equations, okay? Um, it comes down to personal first preference, which one you use, either one gives it the correct answer. This one has way less calculation to do, so my personal recommendation, go with this one, but make sure you remember. So so where did this one come from? Like it, it, normally we start with us, um, but if you negative log both sides, it became that. Okay, so it's, uh, you know, if you negative log everything, then you get you get this um, easier equation to use. Okay, memorize it, you don't give given it, okay? 
All right, I think this is the last one. Okay, so why is this solution, why is this buffer solution more effective at resisting a pH, changing pH, when a small volume of strong base is added rather than a strong acid? So they kind of gave it to you already in the previous part. We, we knew this. We knew the base divided by acid is 2 to 5. So which one do I have more of? I have more CH3COOH, don't I? Because that's 5, that's 2. This is, you know, this is the ratio. I have more CH3COOH, so that means if I add a strong base, that will just be easily neutralized by the by the um, the weak acid and that will resist the pH change to a certain degree. Okay, so that's what, um, it's really straightforward, I think. Um, because what is a buffer solution? Buffer solution resist pH change. Like say our blood is a really good example of buffer. You don't want to drink a sip of Coca-Cola which has a pH of 3.5 and then boom, your pH goes down from 7.2 to 5.8 than it did. You know, that's not very, very nice. Um, so a buffer solution is extremely important in living things. Um, you know, just to resist pH change. So what it does is like in, in the buffer, you have a mixture of the acid and base. If you add an acid, your ba the base part of the buffer will neutralize it and the pH will only go down by a little bit. If in this case, like say for example, if you're adding a strong base, then the weak acid will neutralize it and the pH will go up by a little bit. It doesn't mean it doesn't change completely. It will just go up by a little bit that's what buffers do so if when they say which one's more effective just think about which one you have more of if you have more weak acid it's obviously better if you just keep adding base let's say i'm just going to give you an example let's say if i add 10 mils of acid then that completely depletes the weak base in the in the buffer but i can add like say 50 mils of the of the strong base, like say sodium hydroxide, and then my buffer still holds. So this is how much, you know, this is a, 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 how you can design buffers and to resist certain pH changes. So it's a pretty nice question. Um, so here it is, two to five, means the concentration is higher, hence it's more effective. Another thing that you can do, like um, if they didn't give you two to five, just remember this, if your pH is smaller than pKa, if the pH of the buffer is smaller than the pKa of the weak acid, then the acid concentration will be greater than the base concentration because the only reason to get this to happen is, you know, mathematically that you will, you know how um, we get, um, I'll, I'll use this equation now, Ka times acid divided by base, um, or you can use the other one. Doesn't really matter. Pka plus log base over acid. If your base over acid is, you can try this in your calculator. If your base over acid is a number bigger than one, let's say if you do phi divided by two, and then if you log that number, you're gonna get um, a positive number. If you log a uh, you know, a decimal place number, you're gonna get a negative number. So mathematically, um, you know, I don't wanna spend too much time going through all the math parts, uh, all the math stuff. Just remember, if the pH is smaller than the pKa, then you have more acid, okay? And then you can just, but in this case, I prefer this particular explanation um, because this just makes more sense. Okay, last one, If how would the pH of the buffer change? If you add water, um, the buffer doesn't change because the water will just dilute the thing and the pH is unaffected. Okay, so when water is added, the ratio of the acid and base is unchanged. So this, when you look at, again, just work out the, this equation, the base, the buffer of the pH depends on the ratio of the base versus acid. Okay, um, I think that this exam pretty much covers a lot of things. The only thing it didn't really cover is the, from the top of my head, um, it didn't really do weak acid concentration, uh, pH calculation. It kind of did, but in a slightly different way. So this is a pretty good exam paper. Um, and, I hope, and I hope you gained better understanding from these videos that I've done. Um, if you've been finding this helpful, and if you know anyone else, you know, on the other year 13s that are, are struggling with this particular standard, 
um, share the link with them um, you know get them to subscribe because I'll be doing more of these as um, as time goes by so I'll be doing a lot more by the time of um, NCA exams by the end of the year otherwise study hard stay safe and um, I'll see you guys next time bye bye